Hello. Every time I look at this table and this whole area here, I just can't believe my eyes. This is what I'm like, hang on. Like that. That's what I'm like, I'm like, oh, who came in the night and sorted my house out for me? Oh, it was me. <laughs> I was so unmotivated to start this yesterday. I didn't enjoy doing it and I just was so sluggish and slow, I had no momentum. But overnight, somehow something's clicked into my brain. Which is a big load of motivation to do some more of it, basically. But I've got a bit of a plan, right? I have terrible trouble starting these things and I need actionable steps, literal actionable steps. Oh, by the way, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> There's a bit of dust on it. It's not a line. It's a negative COVID test today. Yahoo! We're very pleased. I say we. I am very pleased about this. Yeah, there's literally like a speck of coffee or something on where the line would be, but it's not, it's definitely coffee. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'm very pleased about that. I've actually managed to do some flute practice for the first time since having COVID as well. Some of the dribble on that just came off on my thumb, that was not very nice. Anyway, I've got a plan, this is what I'm gonna do. Because I get so daunted by starting these types of things, I'm going to think small and I'm gonna do little tiny sections at a time. But houses are full of little tiny sections, I think, if you look close enough. Especially drawers, these drawers are kind of almost representative of our life as home educators, which is now over. And those drawers can be repurposed for other things. In fact, they kind of sort of have been, but they've got a bit out of control. So what I intend to do is take one out at a time, Spread the contents on the table thus. Right, apologies for the messy writing again, because again, I've done this for me, not thinking of filming it. I'm gonna cut up some more of these little bits of scraps of paper. I've got a, a guillotine for chopping up paper, so I, I tend to do that out of scraps, save on sticky notes, you know? So I'm gonna have one little section to go in the bin, one to go in recycling, one to go to charity shop, one to go to a friend. I've got a friend who might be interested in taking some of my arts and crafts stuff to do with school groups. Um, keep, and the keep is going into two sections. Keep loft, as in, I can't bear to part with it because it's sentimentally valuable, but I actually haven't got use for it. Or keep downstairs for use to be accessed. And that is sell, for some reason I didn't put the second L, but I know what it means. <laughs> something I might be able to sell, maybe a music magpie or something like that. But before I start, I need coffee. I'm gonna chop a few more of these up, actually. This is my old guillotine from the home ed days. What is it, a tonic? I don't know if you can still get them today. Not the biggest one, but it served us well. Coffee's ready. I've got a scrap paper drawer and it's full of things like this, for instance, some of the old home ed stuff that are printed out and no longer require. So I'm gonna chop them up to make little mini notes. I folded it off so I know where the half mark is. <laughs> Pushing its boundaries with quite a lot of paper in one go there. Found a nice turquoisey blue pen. <laughs> okay, right, they need to be big. Bin. I was half tempted to do them really nicely on card and laminate them because I thought this could be quite a good tool for actually getting around to decluttering. So I'll think about that, but not for today, I won't. Greasy. Cycling. And last of all, sell. Okay, there's my various categories, so I'm just gonna make a little piles next to them, basically. <laughs> now, drawer number one is not in the least bit scary. It's printer paper, but I've noticed it's, it's spilled out into two drawers, so we need to get them out, give them a clean. I don't even remember putting these things in here. Where did this come from? Photo inkjet paper. This self adhesive labels. Oh, I must have bought them reduced to clear. Look, they were two pounds. Oh, I don't want to throw those out, they can stay. Oh, we've got coloured printer paper. Yeah, we want to keep that, don't we? I didn't even know that was in there, honestly. It's been there so long. It's a bit dusty looking, so I'm going to just take that to the kitchen, give it a bit of a clean and a dry, and bring it back. And in the uh, overspill drawer, there's more, so I think I'll just combine it into one drawer. I'm giving this a little bit of a wipe down. Oh, it's a bit dusty at the back. I don't know if you can see that. It's probably best you can't, to be honest. <laughs> Accumulations of dust from years worth. It's not the sort of thing you normally do. Take your drawers out and clean underneath. Anyway, that's that condensed down into one. Not quite sure if I'm ever going to use this, but I'll keep it in there for now, shall I? Oh, no, I'll tell you what, I'll put it in the card drawer. There's a card drawer. This. Unwrap. That can go in the recycling. 
There's number one drawer going back in. And our first freed up drawer is going in as well. So here's the burning question now. Do I continue to work down or do I work across, do the top and then the bottom? I think we should just go down. I'm answering my own question. I don't even know. Look, the labels have come off these drawers. I'm scared. What is even in this? Loom bands and some stickers and some cheery little dragonflies. That one always reminded me of a part of Marmite. That one. Okay. Mm, I'm going in. Mm. Loom bands perish over time and these loom bands have been in here a long time. <gasps> they are brittle as anything but look what Izzy made with a fork or something like that. She used to get these things on forks. They're so brittle that's just that's gonna snap. Oh these are all Izzy's creations. Look what she used to make. She used to spend ages on these. How can I throw away my daughter's beautiful artistic creations, even though they are perishing and cannot be worn? I tell you what, I'm gonna write, I'm rationalizing in my head now. Things that have got a bit of individuality about them, like this, I'll keep. But maybe not the manky, raggly, scraggly bit, look. I think we're getting the first bit for the bin here. There we are, look, the first bit. Any more little gems in here? See, that doesn't feel too bad. I'm not going to wear that. It's going to be ever so uncomfortable. Look how much work she put into that, though. Oh, it's so hard, isn't it? Well, these things are still perfectly good, but what am I going to use them for? They're still in a sachet. I don't know if a charity shop would accept them. A loom band's even still popular. That's as brittle as anything. I'm looking for amazing, fantastical creations. Uh, I don't think there are any. I think they're mostly loose loom bands in here and they are feeling like they're going to snap. You know, they're feeling pretty perished. Right, I've done my sorting. This was hard. Everything in here is going to go in the bin, unfortunately. It feels so weird throwing them out because the girls used to just, they used to love them. They were so highly sought after. They go in all kind of brittle and a bit gooey. Like, there's no point in keeping them, even for tiny plaits. Because how many tiny plaits do you want in your life? Probably not even that many, let alone that many from that pile over here. I don't know what to do with the hooks because I just wonder if they could be useful for anything else. Well, it doesn't take up a lot of space, does it, if I put that all into one tiny section or something? But why am I keeping that? But does a charity shop want them these days? Because loom banding is not in fashion anymore. Anyway, right, here's my piles. Keep the loft. Nothing, although it was a close thing because there's a few things I thought about it and I thought, no, I'm going to use them. For decoration like somehow and I think I kind of want to hang that somewhere likewise these as well look at that look how thick that is she's done that woven all that amazing these were from a group home educator art and craft session they're just left over I just think they're kind of funny so I was thinking I might try and make them into some kind of hanging thingy maybe string them all up in a string and hang them somewhere when I'm getting a bit more organized <sighs> I couldn't quite bring myself to throw away the loomy things because I've got a very creative daughter who gets these creative crafty ideas so I will hang on to that for now this um it just looks like a handy box so I'm gonna keep hold of that for now stickers I do stick my stickers in my diary and things like that so I'm gonna put those in my sticker box upstairs Recycling this slot, these hooks. I, I ummed and ahed and deliberated and thought, would my friend who works in a school want them? Oh, I don't know. I'll offer them to her. Do you know, I'm going to move them over there. She'd probably say no, and then I can just recycle them. A bit of junk for that. That's all rubbish. That's going. This was a bit of a rubbishy dragonfly, so I'm happy to get rid of that one. Tiny little bag, drawstring bag for charity. And for my friend Pearl, I don't know if she's going to want my stencil thingy of a pike for doing classroom displays, but you never know she might. It can, if not, it can go in the recycling. I found some more loom band looms. <laughs> I knew I had some more. They were stored over there in a fermenting bin, which I've been using as a coffee table. Um, okay, we're keeping some loomage. I think in my textiles drawer, I've got some loomy sorts of things as well. That's just the drawer of horrors, that is. We'll get to that presently in due course. But I'm thinking perhaps the apparatus for weaving could go in their own loom box. Yes. Freed myself up some Tupperware. Yay. Oh, that's finished. 
Thinking about this loom, Lark now, I'm going to free up that office upstairs at some point and there's loads of drawers and storage space up there. So things like looms that are going to get used once in a blue moon could have a drawer up there eventually. But for now, they're going to stay in a temporary drawer down here. Just stuck a temporary label on it. I've done another temporary label for decor. So just for now, temporarily, till I decide what decor and where, I'm just going to shove them in there because I've got a feeling there'll be some more bits to go in there. Crafty bits that we've made. Right, do I dare? Oh, 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 that's, yeah, that's a, a lot of glitter. If you're wondering why I have so much bulk of this stuff for one home educated child, it's because we had lots of home ed friends and we would get together and host them. You know, sometimes we would host them in our house, sometimes we'd go to their house, and sometimes you'd have quite a lot of them and their siblings, you know. The siblings would be friends too, depending on the age. Um, so one would mass cater arts and crafts wise, hence, you know, it hasn't been used much, has it? I think everybody rushed out and bought their own when they found out this was available for one forty nine at the time from B&M, so. Oh my, oh there's a lot of glitter. There's a lot of glitter in here. My light's just gone out over that. This is the thing, the batteries don't last. Oh, there's a mackerel in that one, look. I was gonna do a big wall display in home ed group, but didn't quite get to it. It's a salmon. I was gonna have the kids trace around them, you know, the younger kids that couldn't draw their own, because I always used to differentiate the activities so people of different ages could take part. So like, a, you know, a toddler on a lap, a mother or father could hold the fish down and the kid could draw around the outline or whatever. So we can get them to all make their own different fish. And we were gonna sort of examine the differences between the different species. You know, and over the weeks, to sort of build it up, start with a base or whatever, with some kind of textured background and things in the ocean. And didn't quite get round to that one. Somebody else came and took over arts and crafts and I sort of said, yeah, go on then. Because <laughs> I've been doing it for ages. Um, I don't even know what that is, some sort of pipe cleaner. That looks like it'd be good for cleaning up my inside of my flute, to be honest. No, they're not going in the bin. Sticky gems. I don't know what I'd stick them on, mind, but steer cars. That looks like something Isabel's bought for herself in later years. Cider gang. Probably something busy's. More glitter. Cotton wool. Goodness gracious me. I feel inclined to just sort it out and keep it. I don't know about the paper plates. I see they're good for crafting, but no good for eating off now because they've been in the drawer so long. I don't think they're very hygienic. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off and decide what to do. I'm not doing that well, guys. I mean, I've cleaned it, cleaned it, but I'm just I'm basically getting excited about what I have rather than throwing it away. <laughs> and I'm thinking, whoa, I want to keep this. Um, so, yeah, I think the majority of this is just going to go back in here. I'm keeping the stickers. I think these I better put in Izzy's room. She still likes Monster High Doll, so um, I think that's a Monster High Doll boot. So, <laughs> there you go there. A few things for the bin. There's a load of um, sticky components of kits, basically, which have been absolutely pillaged by our home editor friends. And there's not enough of things to make a whole thing. Like snowmen, they were like... Um, plasticky, puffy snowmen models, two-dimensional ones. Well, there's, there's not enough to make a whole one. There's too many hats and arms and not enough bodies, so I'm going to be ruthless and get rid of those. Those as well, dried up glues. Um, I'm not sure whether to put that in the recycling or the, just the rubbish, but they're dried up glitter pens, so that was easy. And little things like this, you tend to keep them, and then, but then you can't even remember where they are when you need them. And Oh, so they're going. Anyway, right, yeah, um, I'm going to get rid of all the rubbish and put the rest back in there. It looks better now anyway. So in this one, we've got cotton wool glitter shinies. That's what these things are, you know, the little sticky things that you can stick on cards and things. Absolutely tons of glitter. I think a lot of this came from little nail sets that my daughter bought herself and didn't want to use on her nails in the end. That's perfectly good crafting wire. And uh, what do I call it? Pipe cleaners. I don't know if I'll ever use this much glitter in my life, to be honest, but I might as well just keep it. To be honest, I'm not going to put the tissue in there. The tissue's going to go in a separate drawer with papery things. Oh my word, oh, there's more stuff. You will not believe how long this has taken me. I've just put the kettle back on for a second coffee. <laughs> I need help. Right, I'm definitely, definitely not going to use matchsticks. If they could go to a charity shop though, somebody might want those. Oh, we've got beads already sorted. See, how can I get rid of lovely things like that? 
But am I ever going to use them? They're kind of Isbells as well. Oh, I don't know. I'll have a think. I'll, I'll drink coffee and think. Oh, I think we know what's in there. Bells. So I'm affiliated with so many Morris teams. <laughs> I'm always loathe to get rid of bells. And occasionally, you do need them for Christmas gigs and things. Lego. Well, that's easy. Lego can just go in the Lego drawers upstairs. Oh, this is from when we were doing biology. I can't remember what this signified now. Is it... Peptides or something like that. It'll be in one of my old home ed videos when we were doing doing about um yeah biology. Trying to make concepts stick. <laughs> and they've obviously not even stuck with me, so that didn't work. When it was at least three or four years ago, so oh gosh. I'm feeling daunted again. It's okay. I have coffee. Coffee top up. I appear to have survived that little wobble. I put the Lego up in the Lego box. I threw away all the biology models in the bin and all that was left then really was beads and bells. I don't know what to do with the beads. I'm not going to use beads for anything. I don't know if Isabel will because she is a bit artsy crafty. So I think I'm going to do with the beads what I did with the loom band looms. Just keep hold of them for now but keep them tidy. So they are going to go back in the box. Look at that with the bells. And these beads for now because I've got loads of beads all over the house so if we can just confine them to one drawer these are all things that can be threaded onto things basically and I pulled that out and I really uh, scrubbed that with soapy water and a cloth and there so that's all clean now because that was particularly uh, filthy actually with a lot of dust and debris so anyway look we've done a whole row now oh no we haven't we've done a whole column the smallest column <laughs> compared to that one oh my gosh Oh my, oh my word, the textiles drawer. This this is just a, a horror waiting to come springing out, literally. Oh my gosh. Right. Yee. Now my friend might want some of this. Binker. Oh my, it's only cut into a tiny little bit. Oh, so this is, see, this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> a disaster zone. And now I said we had some more looms. You know, jar, I just, I, I hate this. It takes its space. Everything tangles to it. <laughs> That's terrible. This is so bad. Basically, right, I have to explain. For years now, if any of us find a bit of ribbon, a bit of thread, a bit of string anywhere in the house and we're tidying up, we just go up, oh, put it in the textiles drawer and it just gets shoved in the top. That's how that's happened. I am 100% confident that neither Izzy or I are going to attempt to make ourselves a hat with this circular loom. So that is... It's going in the charity bag, which is over there, next to the old microwave. I need Ivy to help me take that to be recycled. They won't collect, apparently. Well, that's just taken a ridiculous amount of time to go through all this lot, and I've got to somehow get it back in order. A lot of it is here, hanging on this doorknob in my textiles recycling bag, and I'm actually going to take myself out for a little walk shortly, first one since COVID, and deposit that bag in the recycling bin. My gosh, these things I've decided to keep. So, hmm, knitting needles. I might start knitting again. Now it's all looking less daunting and overwhelming. I might even start knitting the odd scarf here and there. I like the big chunky ones because they materialise so quickly before your eyes compared to the little fiddly things. <laughs> these were mine when I was a child. Look at that. Those are super old. They're from the 80s at the latest. These, I think my mum bought for Izzy. I think she did, anyway. Did you buy those for Izzy, mum? So I'm definitely going to keep those. Izzy's quite into textiles. She she does kind of partly really want to start dressmaking. She kind of had a little start, but um, didn't really carry on with it. She's got a bit busy with her course, really. Got lots of safety pins, so I'm going to keep those. These are the flipping loom band S clips. I just feel like I can't throw them away, so I put them in this little pot. Buttons, not sure what to do with that, that's an easy threader. Now these are coffee stirrers that I've hoarded and saved and collected up. And when I was doing weaving with like cardboard homemade looms with donated wool with home educated children, we used to use these as um, loom shuttles, you see, handheld. And they were nice and blunt, you know, they couldn't stab themselves in the eye with it or anything. Nobody came to any great problem. I've got these lovely big chunky needles. I think I'll hang on to those. Yeah, that's a loom thingy, a loom shuttle. I don't know where the actual big loom is. Sequins. Yeah, right, I'm going to somehow get this in order. We've got some felt. <laughs> that one didn't quite get finished. Look, oh, look at this, it's funny. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the recycling thingy. Oh, we've got a scrap of material, a little bit of wool. I tidied up what was decent ribbons and just put them with little wire ties out of my wire tie tin. 
whenever I get any wire ties off anything, if they're any good, I, I pop them in there. Yeah, I've got a few little bits and bobs, some embroidery thread. I threw out the Velcro, you know, that was just tangling everything up. I thought I probably got it for a pound from a pound shop in the first place. And I have a whole um, opened one here that's all tidy. So, was that? Three euro, one euro, look. It's the sort of thing I'd buy when I'm abroad. <laughs> look at this elastic here. And that, 5p, that says. I know I had that. As a school child, I think I picked it up from a charity shop. So that's super old, isn't it? Wow, eh? Couple of tape measures, a bit more Velcro. Right, I'm gonna somehow think how on earth to get this in here without it just going into a big mess again. I could do with drawer dividers. I have got a drawer divider thing upstairs, but I think it's it's gonna to be too big. I'll have a look. Well, here it is. It's one of, it's something I bought recently, you probably sort of buying it. It expands to fit any drawer. It feels like a bit of a waste putting it in here because it only goes in at its smallest and you have to plonk it on top really. So I could put some more materially things underneath and then put itty bitty things on top like the safety pins and buttons but I'm not sure if I've quite got enough to justify doing that. I'll have a little experiment. There, I'm truly pleased with that. That looks absolutely lovely. So it's got a top thing that lifts off which is all very well sorted out now as you can see in categories. And underneath we've got very neatly tied up bits of ribbon and wool and felt pieces, some toy stuffing, you know, like soft toy stuffing, knitting needles and shuttles and things for looms and a couple of those coffee stirrers. And the rest of them are going to my friend. And of course I gave the drawer a good wash out as well. Now, this has taken me up to nearly half past four, and I've had enough now. <laughs> I am definitely ready for a break. I'm gonna have a little bit of cake that I defrosted yesterday, and I sit down for 20 minutes, then I'm going for a walk, and I'm gonna drop that stuff off, and I'm gonna ring my daughter later. We have agreed. We haven't been speaking much on the phone. I was absolutely convinced she'd be ringing me every day, but she hasn't been at all, so I've hardly spoken to her. Most of the communication has been done by texting, so. Anyway, right, I'm going to tidy this table off because, you know, carry on as I mean to carry on and what. And, um, yeah, have a little break. It's just gone seven now. I got in at about ten minutes before I was due to ring my daughter because we arranged to ring at six. A little bit of Quizlet, a bit of Duolingo, and then rang her and had a lovely chat for 53 minutes, in fact. She's having a really good experience in uni. She's a little concerned because they haven't got a lot of contact hours. It's like a day and a half a week um, without the extracurricular stuff. She's got some extracurricular things and a language class to slot in as well. Um, so maybe they're expected to do a lot of self-directed study, stuff like that. But anyway, in the first two weeks, nothing yet, no assignments or anything yet. But anyway, we've been having a good chat. She's been doing quite a bit of sort of travelling a little further afield and exploring the wider area, getting trains to places and exploring on foot. And she's been sending me lovely photos of cathedrals and things like that, just bits and bobs of things that she's visited and explored all on her own. She's like me, she likes to go and do things on her own. So it's lovely to see her flourishing and branching out into the world as a young woman. Anyway, I, I filmed a lot today. I didn't realise quite how much until I uh, checked just before popping out for my walk. Oh, Izzy said I can get rid of the rainbow loom. I can just bag it up, put it in a charity bag. I, uh, I think I better write what it is on it in case I don't know. I was thinking to myself after, do you know what? If I wanted to ever buy another one, probably wouldn't be that much money to buy it off Amazon or something. Because sometimes we keep hold of these things just in case we might want it again. But actually, we do have the option of just rebuying it. Anyway, I am rambling on. I am going to go now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Could you please give it a like? If you happen to like it, subscribe down below to watch more videos from me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.